There's no honor in being on this list. There's only danger, Jeff. And I don't have to spell out why there is danger in being on such a list, do I? Absolutely not. But you're competing up against a bunch of self-serving egomaniacs like Sean Hannity, the leprechaun Bill O'Reilly. They, they trumpet these values. They don't stick up for you, which is pure cowardice, because anyone with a half of a mind knows it could be them next. Okay. Well, I, I wouldn't save all my wrath for them. I, I just consider them to be entertainers who uh, don't want to rise to the occasion. I mean, frankly, if you want to talk about them one more time, I will. The, the greatest thing they could do for their own um, reputation would be to say, you know, even though Savage has said things about me that are horrible, and I really despise what he's called me. He called me wallbanger. He called me leprechaun. He called me golfer. I don't like it. It got very personal. I think he was petty and childish. He shouldn't have done it, and I resent it. But there's a bigger principle here, and for that reason, I'm going to have Michael Savage on the Bill O'Reilly show, meaning O'Reilly could say that, or Hannity could get off his stupidity and say, even though he said these things about me, I'm going to show him a bigger man. But they're not bigger men, Jeff. That's the point. They are cowards. They're not bigger men. This is a golden opportunity for them to show that they're bigger men, but they won't and can't do it. And they rule Fox News like a lockdown. The painted girls are afraid to touch me. You know, in the beginning, the painted girls were on my side because they understand what's at stake here. But the painted ladies of Fox News have been warned, probably by the shillelagh holder, uh, not to talk about Michael Savage. Well, that's their loss, and I don't care about him anymore. I don't need them. I need you. I need you. Because one day, the truth will come out. One day, I'm telling you as I stand here, I will get Look, my next goal is, is I'm trying to get this book to press, Banned in Britain. And we're in the last phases, copy editing before the printer, etc. You're buying the book in droves. It's doing well, so don't think I'm doing it for the buck. Okay, it's not. It's just more taxes and more money to give away. I'm doing it to get the message out. I want a document of what was done to an innocent man, so it's not done again. I want you to have this document so that you know what these private school boys in England did to me. These snotty louts who never worked a day in their life, given these jobs through political connections, writing these snitty little notes to each other in this clinical manner that you would say it was right out of the Third Reich. That's what it looks like to me. Only it's not conservatives who did it. It's good old, compassionate liberals. Savage. The home of the savage nation in the belly of the beast, San Francisco. Talk 910 KNEW and online at 910KNEW.com. It's so important that we pass health insurance reform. I know there's been a lot of misinformation in this debate, and there are some folks out there who are, frankly, bearing false witness. So Obama says that there are people putting out misinformation, that's the new Democrat Party line, and that there are people who are bearing false witness. I agree with him. The question is, who in his administration is putting out misinformation, and who in his administration is bearing false witness? The answer is all of them. Now, the reason I say that, and again, I speak boldly, is because it's true. I will prove with the following news article, which we linked up from the Associated Press on michaelsavage.com, that there are people very close to Obama who are putting out misinformation, and there are people very close to Obama who are bearing false witness, specifically to make millions of dollars. Now, this information came out today from the Associated Press that his chief of staff, uh, who has a name named Axelrod, uh, once was involved with some consulting companies that now have the contracts to put out the information, or some would say the misinformation in this debate, uh, and the government is funding it, or the Democrat Party is funding it to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. And so I agree with the president when he says there's a lot of misinformation in this debate, and I agree with the president further when he says that there are some out there who are bearing false witness. I would also add to that list any Democrat who has called the town hall uh, uh, goers, um, <clears throat> various names, including Nazi or un-American. That would include uh, Arlen Specter, Barbara Boxer, and the others who claim that the American people are bearing uh, false witness and putting out misinformation. And so, again, I refer you to my website, where I try to find the best articles from all of the press sources. Obama's men make millions from health care push, I ask. Came from the Associated Press. 
It says, and I'm quoting now, Obama's push for a national health care overhaul is providing a financial windfall to Democratic consulting firms closely connected. Cl- now pay attention. Not with Republicans now. President Barack Obama's push for national health care overhaul is providing a financial windfall in the election offseason to Democratic consulting firms that are closely connected to the president and two top advisors, says the Associated Press. Coalitions of interest groups running at least $24 million in pro-overhaul ads hired GMMB, which worked for Obama's 08 campaign, and whose partners included top Obama campaign strategists. They also hired a key PD message and media, which was founded by David Axelrod, a top advisor to Obama's campaign and now in the White House, uh, to the White House. AKPD, AKPD did work for Obama's campaign, and Axelrod's son, Michael, and Obama's campaign manager, David Plouffe, worked there. The firms were hired by Americans for Stable Quality Care and its predecessor, Healthy Economy Now. Each was formed by a coalition of interest, now listen very carefully, with big stakes in health care policy. I want you to listen to who wants Obamacare, the drug maker lobby, PHRMA, the AMA, the SEIU, the Service Employees International Union, and Families USA. Now, why would pharmaceutical companies and their lobbying groups, why would the AMA, which is big medicine, why would they want health care reform? Huh? The same reasons that they uh, put out misinformation about vitamins on a daily basis. The same reason they are opposed to self-help. The same reason they attack nutritional information on a daily basis. The same reason they push you into drugs and into surgery and into unnecessary procedures. Because they're going to make trillions of dollars over a 10-year period. They are, in fact, behind Obama's health care overhaul. It has nothing to do with saving money. But there are other groups that want health care reform. They would include La Raza, who are now inside the White House. I want to add, by the way, there's no evidence that Axelrod directly profited from the group's ads, according to this article. They say that Axelrod took steps to separate himself from AKPD AKPD, when he joined Obama's White House. Ha! Ha! Just as George Bush's minions did, huh? You mean when Halliburton was accused of war profiteering? You liberals let that go, huh? By the way, AKPD owes Axelrod $2 million from his stock sale and will make preset payments over four years, starting with $350,000 on December 31, according to Axelrod's personal financial disclosure report. I ask you, good liberals, you're all so fair, if this was a Republican administration that came out that Karl Rove had been a, uh, had owned owned the firm, and uh, the firm was now getting some of the $24 million in pro-overhaul ads, what would be going on on the show, for example, on MSNBC, where the uh, gentleman allegedly urinates on himself. Uh, because his leg shakes so much and he can't control his bladder. Tell me what he'd be saying tonight. So there it is. $24 million in ads. And these companies are making a good portion of those ads. And there's no talk about ethics rules for this administration. They've blown it out of the fence. They've blown a hole through the fence of any ethics uh, rules whatsoever. There are no ethic rules in the Obama administration. There's only horse manure. AKPD has a full page on Axelrod that includes pictures of Obama. In one photo, Obama hugs Plouffe on election night. I'll read the article. I didn't write it. Of course, now, you could call the Associated Press racist. That would be the next attack. The author from the Associated Press of this article, entitled, Firms with Obama Ties Profit from Health Push, was written by a Sharon Themer, T-H-E-I-M-E-R. I suppose now she will be banned uh, from the White House. Now you understand about health care, what it's all about. It's all about money. Now let's go back to my dilemma. Because the corruption of liberalism is something to behold. But that's not limited to liberalism. It's the hypocrisy of liberalism that's most worrisome. So now let's go to the callers and see what you think. WOR, New York. Jesse, go ahead. Please, you're on the Savage Nation. Yes, uh, Dr. Savage, I don't wish to sound like the devil's advocate. I like to see England change their mind, but I seriously doubt that will not happen. I lived in England I experienced, for one year. I experienced a similar situation to yours in which I was uh, invited to leave. Uh, and I could tell you now that from my observations, uh, they don't, England does not want to jeopardize their relationship with Saudi money. Uh, they own uh, a great deal of property in England, probably the lion's share of England. Well, let's and, go back uh, to Princess. 
Let's go back to Princess Diana and Harrods and that little event. Well, you know, I can't comment much on that. All I could say is from my own experience, I could tell you that they own... Uh, I'm Har saying that because the owner of Harrods happens to be a Saudi, uh, originally from Saudi Arabia. Is that not true? Yes. Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, so I seem to. I, I realize what you're saying now, but what yeah, I want uh -huh, to bring out uh -huh, was uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. In other words, in other words, England may be a wholly owned subsidiary of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, is what you're implying. Uh, that's uh, that, yes, exactly. Uh huh. Well, let's go to the next step. How about George Bush being led around by his finger by the King of Saudi Arabia? Yes, this too. How about that's Obama the... bending over and having a necklace put on his neck like it was a rock star by the King of Saudi Arabia? Yes, it's the Almighty Buck. You know, mm -hmm. Now you understand why when a man speaks about borders, language, and culture, he becomes an enemy of the New World Order? Yes, they're going to trade Okay, enemies. well now you understand what my book is about. Band in Britain is not just about this case with England. It's about the fact that they picked...